I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Señor Presidente. Mr. President, we affectionately and respectfully greet His Excellency Mr. Bruno Rodríguez Padrilla, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Cuba, who is with us here today. Mr. President, for almost 60 years, Cuba has endured an economic, commercial, and financial blockade, which is illegal. It is illegal because it violates all norms of international law. It is inhumane because it violates the human rights of an entire people. And worse still, it is criminal because it is a policy of calculated cruelty which seeks to produce pain and suffering among the civilian population. It is an attack which uses economic instruments. It is an act of collective punishment which, owing to its systematic and deliberate nature, constitutes a crime against humanity. The unilateral coercive measures applied illegally against Cuba have a further reach and a more acute impact against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic. Consequently, the government of the United States of America has become a sponsor of economic terrorism in using the pandemic as a weapon of war to advance its own miserly national interests and its ambitions of colonial domination. Mr. President, in spite of all of the above, Cuba has renewed its international solidarity, helping and providing technical assistance in the arena of healthcare since last year, when the world was, and as it continues to fight against the worst of the pandemic, Cuban medical brigades work in the field in more than 35 countries across, across Latin America and the Caribbean, Africa, Europe, and the Middle East to save millions of lives. This will go down in the history of humankind. While the United States have thousands of civil servants devoted to extorting countries with illness and suffering, Cuba has thousands of doctors deployed throughout the world to defend health and life. We greet and welcome with great admiration the news that Cuban scientists have managed to develop the Abdallah vaccine with 92.28% of effectiveness against coronavirus. It has been certified as such. We hail the fact with the pride of brothers that Cuba, the Cuban people have achieved this goal in the midst of deprivation. And this is one of the major victories in its fight for freedom, peace, health, and life. And this is a major lesson for the world. Humankind needs more vaccines, not more US blockades. Mr. President, the policy of suffocation imposed by the United States of America against Cuba represents the system or the most unjust, severe, and protracted system of unilateral coercive measures that has been applied against any country in modern history. It is a crime which affects us all because because it is a denial of the political, economic, and cultural diversity that the planet enjoys. It is a denial of our right to national sovereignty. It is an act of imposition of power by the United States on the rights of dozens of countries. It is an attack against the system of international relations as a whole. Today, economic violence has become the preferred weapon of war of the government of the United States to expand its perpetual war against a third of the global populations. The United States is a threat to the security of humankind because it is showing that economic aggression has an impact, a destructive impact similar to that of conventional wars. It is a pra this practice is of growing danger for the international community, and it is for this reason that when we call for the respect of the United Nations and for the international law in the case of Cuba, what we're in fact doing is defending the right to security and peace for all nations of the world. To conclude, tomorrow in Venezuela, we will celebrate the fact we will celebrate that it is exactly 200 years since we, con we conquered our national independence with acts of great sacrifice. This fight has not finished. Today, we are fighting for our freedom against a coalition of powers being controlled by the United States of America, which is attacking us to 
ensure that we once again become a colony. This is the this struggle is the same struggle that Cuba is waging today. For this reason, on behalf of the free and sovereign people of Cuba, and as a responsible, solidarity-loving member of the international community, we will vote in favor of the resolution which establishes the need to put an end to the embargo imposed against Cuba. At the same time, we are calling upon the, the, the government of the United States of America to put an end to its colonial aggression and to uphold its obligations under international law. Today, we will vote for the independence of Cuba. Many thanks.